This is the Rebel Scum Podcast. Available in video on YouTube and audio wherever you listen to your podcasts. Every week, Brock and James talk the latest rumors, news, and theories from a galaxy far, far away. Support us on Patreon for exclusive offers and join the Star Wars discussion. Patreon.com slash Rebel Scum Podcast. Here are your hosts, Brock and James. You are always scum. Rebel scum. We are back and better than, than ever. Sorry for being away so long. This is your everyone. episode also. We return for your episode. 227. Child. We've tried to do this five times. <laughs> hey, two two seven. I think originally should have been August fourth. Two months ago should have yeah, been two two seven. It took us two it's, months to get here, but here we are. That's right. Here we are. Here we are. <clears throat> As in olden days. Yeah. Happy golden days to you. Um. Wow, James. I feel like so much has happened in Star Wars since we last recorded. Yep. Nothing huge. But like a lot of like Star Wars Visions came out. Yeah. Um that uh they showed that trailer for oh god. What is that new Star Wars video game called? I should have written this down. Oh um Tales. Uh, oh my gosh. It's been so long I can't remember. It's uh Sis with an S. No? I'm looking up. Star this Wars gripping segues, <clears throat> but but you you bring up a good point. It's been like sprinkled, like it's like Star Wars yeah. sprinkle. It hasn't been a, a meal or even like a dessert. It's been like a bunch of sprinkles, which I like sprinkled donuts, so I'm all in mm. on it. But yeah, it's been like a lot of little sprinkles. We got a, a release date for for Boba Fett, December 29th is when we get to um, yes check out the book of Boba Fett. Obi Wan can always finish uh, filming, taping, whatever, visually. Uh, Andor, I think, is finished. Uh, November 12th is like the big Disney Plus date. Shang-Chi is going to be on. Have you seen that movie yet, Brock? Which one? Shang-Chi? Shang-Chi? No, not yet. I'm waiting since it's coming out in November on yeah, Disney no, Plus. November 12th on theater. Disney Plus. That's that's the big Disney Disney day. Uh, it should be ex- it should be a good day. We're going to get that. Um, I, 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 uh, I haven't seen Star Wars Visions yet. What's the game called? You got them. Uh, Hunters. Hunters. Doesn't start with an S at all. And it's and seeing that trailer, you were right. It's exactly like their version of Overwatch. Like even like the style of animation is like, yeah, that looks like Overwatch. Yeah, it's smart. The, the Fortnite Overwatch, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it looked good. Like, I, like I don't play those games, but like it just like, like the characters. Yeah. They're like the what two minute trailer they put. It was like, oh yeah, I I try this. Well, Netflix released a new He Man TV sh- cartoon show aimed towards yeah. kids. I I decided to check out the first episode just to see, and I was like, man, I told my my cousin she has a a. F- a four-year-old son i said mm-hmm. what well, see if he'll watch it i don't think she did but i said see if he'll watch this because it's because to me mm-hmm. like i loved he-man when i was four or five yeah. um and this he-man you know the animation is so smooth it looks like hunters and fortnite and i was like oh, okay so but i have a friend um and his six-year-old no he didn't watch that or no his nine-year-old watch i think really enjoyed it 
But uh, hmm. the six year old watched the new. Have you seen the 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 Star Wars Halloween Lego? Special? No, not yet. I have. Uh, yeah, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> I watched that. <laughs> I, I haven't watched Visions yet. I don't watch the adult content, but the Halloween. You haven't watched the 15 minute <laughs> shorts. <laughs> Is that how long they are? The 15 minutes? Oh, yeah. Like they vary. I think maybe one might be 30 minutes. Ironically, it took me two days to watch the Halloween special. I think I watched it in 15 minute spurts. But it was, uh, <laughs> I, I thought, you know, if, if for kids, I think kids would very much. It's like when I watched this, I said, oh, this is like a Halloween special I would have looked forward to. As a, ch- I always look forward to Halloween Christmas specials. As a kid, you know, you wanted to watch Charlie Brown, Pumpkin, Great Pumpkin, uh, you know, Legend of Super Hollow. Obviously, I loved uh, Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters, the Halloween special, yeah. Garfield's Halloween specials, the greatest Halloween special of all time. You look forward to those, and this had that. I don't know. There was a quality to it that reminded me of of those specials. Uh, and a friend mm, of mine okay. at work, his son watched this six years old, and his son doesn't even like Star Wars, but he was totally in on on this show. <laughs> I've been selling things on uh, Facebook Marketplace, and one dude I was selling, I forget what it was, but he was like watching, he sent me a message, and he's like, okay, I can meet you at this time, and then like a couple minutes later, he sent me a message, he's like, uh, Star Wars Halloween special, much like this, if this happened, and I'm like, cool, and he's like, oh, sorry, wrong, <laughs> wrong message box. <laughs> I'm like, that's funny that you brought that up because I know exactly what it is. I mean, I haven't watched it, but I was like, (laughs) someone just threw up. It's like, I get it. (laughs) There's like a bunch of, it's like, uh, they do a really, they bring a character back (laughs) from Rogue One that shocked the hell out of me. Like, it's not something Mm. you would expect. And it was hilarious. And then, so that character tells terrifying tales, I guess, to uh, Poe Dameron and someone else. And one of them is about Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren, and it uh, and I really, really, oh, enjoy- yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I was like, man, give us just a freaking mini series on on Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren. I mean, they they did it more like a playful, childish kind of way. Yeah, but I was like, man, just kind of do it. I, I'd watch that. I know they did the comic yeah. and everything, but come on. And it. that was one of the things that attracted me to watching this. Or, or- try to watch this at some point because like they put that character that they made up in the comics as a lego character i'm like oh and i think wow, he's christian cool. slater is a christian slater that voice that's kind of wild it's yeah he's good um but the rogue one character that pops up <laughs> how, do you know who i'm talking about have you heard no i haven't yeah, watched it just either. when you watch it and the character shows up you're like wow that's <laughs> digging deep you know digging <laughs> deep but there is a there's a hut in it and the hut uh Hut saves the day in every way. I'll say the hut's the, the hut is my favorite part of the of this show. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, speaking of huts, one of my favorite episodes of Visions is I think the second one. I forget what it's called, but it's cool because it's got. I forget who the voices are. One might be Bonnie Mo- Bobby Moynihan as a hut, and the other one is uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt as this like. You get through the story. It turns out he was a Padawan during Order sixty six, and he's just been r- running. And this hut, he runs into this hut. I forget what the name is. And like they, he's like, you "Come with me!" And they start a band. What? <laughs> the hut is being hunted by uh, by Boba Fett. Like in the previews for um, Visions, you know how it's like there wasn't like there's not going to be normal characters that you've seen in this but then there was this one shot of what looks like boba fett that is that one it is boba fett jabba is hunting this other thing so without like it's it's good it's actually really really good <laughs> it's like they're a galactic rock band or whatever <laughs> so that's awesome that's a good one um there's one that's like legit like just astro boy as yeah i've seen taking place in Star Wars. i've seen video of that I do, I do yeah, want to see so. uh, visions. The, the again, the reason why I haven't is, and I now I don't have the summer weather as an excuse anymore. But it just, yeah. you know, I always say this though because I always watch the same thing over and over, and I watch this terrifying tales thing. But it's like it's it's. Uh, I feel like visions is the thing I have to pay attention to when I watch. Right, it's not mm-hmm. background. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And so, like, I want to kind of sit and enjoy it when I have a moment to kind of sit and enjoy it, not something where I'm like, well, I'll put it on while I'm doing X or Y. So 
Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm I am excited. I think it looked the trailer for Visions was like the best Star Wars trailer we've gotten since like Phantom Menace. Yeah. You know, like it was like the it was awesome. It's really good. Like it's like you know uh, what what if for Marvel has been a huge success. Just wrapped up, I think last week or this week. I can't even keep t- track of time anymore. This is probably as close to what if that Star Wars can get. But it's like it's a bummer because it's like it's not going to get as much attention as what if is getting right now. But well, oh, um, I think Vision's got a renewed for season two, I believe. Nice, nice. Which is exciting. It's a no-brainer. So, I think what it's if like, also got renewed for season two. Yeah. I mean, well, I was talking yeah. to Fantasia about this the other day because there's a new book. We have it on the rundown. A new mm-hmm. book was announced. Have you heard about it? Shadow of the Sith? Yeah, it's in my news thing, but yeah. Okay, so the book sounds awesome. They're going to... Yeah, it does. I have the synopsis. Do you want to talk about that right now? Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, read the synopsis. Okay, cool, cool. Give me one. Synopsis, get out of here. I have... Because I, I have very... Uh, I have thoughts on all of it across the board. Perfect. But before we go into that, one last thing that happened while we were gone, Ooh. since you've been gone. <laughs> a lot of things happened um, while we were gone. <laughs> um, Knights of the Old Republic is going to get redone uh, for PS5. And I'm mad because now I have to get a PS5. That's <laughs> like, weird because it was on like, HD. Yeah, yeah. I think there was some cross. Was it? But yeah, it was strictly Xbox. But uh, yeah, they're getting it's getting redone. I'm I'm sure actually it might be on Xbox as well. But I'm pretty sure it was. I only heard that it's coming to PS5 like you, but I, who knows? Yeah, so it's just like oh man. So that's another exciting thing. Okay, so yes, one of the main books, and it's like the first one they push. Uh, I think StarWars.com dropped this. Star Wars: Shadow of the Sith by Adam Christopher, which takes place between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. Um, so here's the synopsis. Luke Skywalker and Lando Calrissian return in this essential novel set between what I just said, Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. The Empire is back nearly two decades on <clears throat> from the Battle of Endor. The tattered remnants of Palpatine's forces have fled to the farthest reaches of the galaxy. But for the heroes of the New Republic, danger and loss are ever-present companions, even in this newly forged era of peace. Jedi Master Luke Skywalker is haunted by visions of the dark side for telling an ominous secret growing somewhere in the depths of space on a dead world called Exegol. The disturbance in the Force is undeniable, and Luke's worst fears are confirmed when his old friend Lando Calrissian comes to him with a report of a new Sith menace. After his daughter was stolen from his arms, Lando searched the stars for any trace of his lost child, but every new rumor only led to dead ends and fading hopes until he crossed paths with Ochi of Bestoon, a Sith assassin tasked with kidnapping a young girl. Ochi's true motives remain shrouded in Luke, shrouded to Luke and Lando, for on a junkyard moon, a dis- mysterious envoy of the Sith Eternal has bequeathed a sacred blade to the assassin, promising that it will give him answers to the questions that have haunted him since the Empire fell. In exchange, he must complete a final mission, a retur- return to Exco with the key to the Sith's glorious rebirth. The granddaughter, Darth Sidious himself, Rey. As Ochi hunts Rey and his and her parents to the edge of the galaxy, Luke and Lando race into the mystery of the Sith's lingering shadow and aid a young family running for their lives. So yeah, that's kind of wild. Uh, what are your thoughts? I think this is something that I think once the Rise of Skywalker ended, whether you liked it or not, this was a story mm-hmm. that you wanted more of. Yeah, even before oh, yeah. like Battlefront Two, toyed with Luke on his little quests, right? Yeah. Like, this is the one yeah. we wanted for a while. But I, I do have a few overall thoughts. Right. That uh, that are like, first of all, two and a half years after The Rise of Skywalker comes out, we're getting this. Yeah, yeah. Right. <clears throat> like, I, I, you know, it's whatever, you know, people might have been, you know, wanting it back then. Do they, is there still like that need for it now, you know? Mm. Secondly, I appreciate that it's a novel, and I'm sure it's going to be great. But you have Disney Plus, <laughs> like, and you compare what Marvel does to what or to what Star Wars does, and it's like Marvel's like, well, well, uh, Anthony Mackie, here's your shield, and Marvel's like, yeah, but we're going to watch a show on that. 
You know, it's like they do these. And then in, in, in Rise of Skywalker, Lando's like, hey, how's it going? Do you have a story? Yeah. And then radio silence and two and a half years later, there's yeah, like a yeah. book. It's like, and so I appreciate that we're getting the story and I'm looking forward to, to reading it. I just feel like, couldn't mm-hmm. it have been a series? On, yeah, yeah. Like, couldn't they have, have maximized that? I mean, I, look, look, we are going to be spoiled with Boba Fett. Uh, Mando three, Obi Wan and Andor, I get it, but at this, but I, I don't know. It just I feel like it's when they did the Rise of Kylo Ren comic is like just it's just a comic. It's like it could be yeah, something yeah. more to to appeal to a larger audience. So that, I mean, I am excited. The, the synopsis sounds wonderful, um, yeah, and great, and everything that I wanted. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, like it, this is what we've been like clamoring for. It's like, come on, do the Luke and Lando, whatever this mission was. But like, here's the thing: I never really thought about is like, oh, what if this is where we tell like how Lando may or may not be associated with? Um... Oh Jana? God, what's her name? Jana. Yeah. It's like cool, but like, yeah, now it feels forced. You know what I mean? Like, uh... yeah, I I heard the rumor like early on that that she was Lando's daughter who was kidnapped but i think i'm with yeah. you i think now that the movie's been done dust has settled it's like don't make her his daughter make her someone who reminds him of his daughter right like okay well i lost my kid who are you let's figure this out. i think that i mean as much as you know it'd be great to have lando re- reunited with his daughter we don't even know he has a daughter is, <laughs> is it even mentioned yeah yeah i can't remember no, like, I don't this think... will be the first yeah like... so like which is great. Which is again for a book miniseries. Couple, that's fine. You could you could you can add that in there. That doesn't affect mm-hmm. anything. But to make a Jana that you know just that could, that could be for if that's the case that could potentially be forced by the force. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it, it does feel it does feel forced because it's like it's not like Lando goes on a mission in the movie and then finds her and is like maybe like yeah. it's just they find her bring her back and they just happen to be in the same the, like the same planet at the end of it. like like that just well, doesn't force brought them I, together brock sure 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 sure. <laughs> that's but, like, the thing with star wars you just have to say the force and you're like well yeah, plot yeah. hole plot hole fixed and maybe this is like this is a stupid point but like that han solo lando calrissian book they put out last shot or whatever when oh, like, yeah, yeah. solo came out like sort of a way to like bridge it all together where it does like has has old lando young lando and like all that mixed together but there's never mention of i mean he has a really he's in a relationship with someone but there's no mention of children or marriage or, or i mean you don't have to get married to have children but like it's just like it's sort of like it, I don't know if that's a good enough excuse. It's just like, well, this you had this, and there's no mention of that. Like, yeah. it, I, perhaps they can figure out a way to work together. They're they're good at doing stuff like that. So I don't know. I guess I'm all I'm saying is like that part just seems like you could have just like we just want Lando and Luke to go on a mission. That's it. There doesn't need to be anything more to it. Though reading the synopsis, that's how we get Lando to where he is. Yeah, to 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 find Ochi or or look for Ochi, Ochi or whatever, however you pronounce it. A bastoon, like, bastoon. Yeah, like <sighs> I will say, I would like to read it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I, yeah I'm a, I would love to read it. I just think this just feels like a missed opportunity. You could do an animated series on it, a live like just. I just feel like in that regard, it's a missed opportunity. Like you're just, it's. It's like, well, wow, this is a novel now. It's so I mm-hmm. so it's so where does like their their TV shows mm-hmm. line up? Are they going to live within that? I mean, Obi Wan and Andor are one thing. Well, no, Andor kind of fits in with the Mandalorian timeline. Is obviously it's like ten years earlier or whatever. But yeah, actually, Obi Wan would be too. So they're all in that. Like they're gonna are they gonna just live in that time frame and they're not gonna, you know, and, and everything post sequels are just going to be like well it's in the book yeah read the book Mm -hmm. you know it just i feel i don't i don't know or if they haven't i don't know i'm curious to see i'm curious to see the uh the how what obi-wan looks like how far from the prequel look it feels and how close to the original trilogy look i feel like it's going to be all original trilogy look which um 
probably makes sense since since Rogue One did, and it's probably like what five years, ten years before Rogue One, or whatever. Who knows? I'm I'm curious. I don't know. I'd like to. I don't know. I just we're getting four shows, which is great, but Marvel's giving us a show for like every breath we take in a yeah. day. Mm. So you know, like, why isn't there more? Star Wars. I don't know. Because it's just like... I, I mean... Anime, yeah. I don't want to take away from the books, but... I I know your parents are going to read those books, but they might yeah. be... They might... They might not, but they would... There, there'd be a, a better chance of them watching a show on Disney Plus based on that than reading a book based on that. Yeah, and I feel like I, there's, and you know, your parents might not be the demographic they're looking for. But I'm just using your parents. They're they're like, yeah, but because they're not, they're like, yeah, I have to like they're into the movie, yeah, and the theater. But like, yeah, Disney Plus is just not there. Even though they have my Disney Plus sign, <laughs> I know they don't watch it. So, but just, I just, it's just, I feel like they're missing out on like a whole demographic when they just put everything in book or comic form. And there's a place for books and comics, but a story of this magnitude, I just feel it could have been told in, mm. a, in a limited series or even... Uh, I know Bob Iger said he wasn't going to do Disney movies on there, but why not? What's the difference between a limited series and a movie? Four hours? Like, yeah. You know, it's just a longer movie. So I don't know. It just I feel like... I'm looking forward to this. This will be... I will tell you that I... I at this moment in time, I would plan on reading that book mm. before I plan on reading any of the High Republic or any of the other <laughs> hundreds of books yeah. that I've missed in the last year yeah. of not buying books. I'm, and that's nothing against any of them. That just this one is just way more intriguing to me than any of those. Yeah, yeah, stories. yeah. So that's cool. Like it's just like there's so many things coming out. Uh, yeah, there's a, like, a whole bunch of books, and that was just like the only synopsis I read. I was like, oh, cool. So, Andrew texts me, Shadow of the Sith! Exclamation point. I said, I don't know what you're talking I was going for a walk with my dog. I said, I do not know what you're talking about. And then he told me, and I looked it up, and I was like, <gasps> And then I said, But why, why can't I, why aren't I watching this? Like, I would watch down once a week to watch this series with Aaron, you know, just sit there and, yeah. and watch. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I don't know. Hopefully, in the next six months we get more notice on things because, like, uh, perhaps COVID slowed a lot of things down. Yeah, I don't, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But look, like, we're going to be spoiled. But maybe we're just spoiled. It's Boba Fett and or Obi Wan Mando season three. Like that's next year, right? Yeah, yeah. Because December twenty ninth is effectively twenty twenty two, so that's going to bring us into like. Mm. February, right? March. Yeah. And then Obi Wan will probably kick in, or Andor, and then Andor will kick in, and then you know there'll be a gap somewhere, and then Mando yeah. season three will kick in in like December probably. I think we're yeah. So like that's a that's basically a full year of Star Wars nonstop. Yeah, exactly. I just I think too it's like Marvel had Wandavision. Winter Soldier, Falcon, and uh, Loki sort of in the gate. And it seems like the second WandaVision dropped and it made a huge success, then they were like full throttle, like whatever yeah. it takes, put it in, put it in, put it in. I, I don't think they have done that technically with Star Wars. They just had Mandalorian. So, I mean, it did great. So Which hit big, but it was it's like, it's more niche than WandaVision because WandaVision is the Marvel brand. Like it's yeah. Whereas, whereas the thing with Star Wars is you have a prequel brand, an original trilogy brand, and you have a sequel brand. And Mando hit, I guess, the OT brand a little bit harder, and so you're, it's it's different. It's <laughs> it's it's a different beast than Marvel for for sure. There's no argument yeah. about that. But I also argue that uh, COVID, you know, I I I think it affected the ending of of the WandaVision show, and uh, yeah. maybe Star Wars like we will not have. No, that's not what they did at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so I was like, yeah. oh man. Um, but I, I, I can't wait for visions. I really do think, you know, if if 
you're hanging out with uh, kids who want to watch a Halloween special that the Lego Halloween special is uh, mm. it's it's a fun little Halloween ride uh, for sure. Uh, there's yeah, no I, I definitely want to watch it. Yeah. Rehem and I are going to start watching Halloween movies today, actually. So, well, oh. yesterday the Muppet Haunted Mansion came out, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. La- actually, last year I watched the Eddie Murphy Haunted Mansion movie, <laughs> and I, I believe, uh, uh, my friend Trevor does a rating on Instagram with his his newborn, who's now a year old. But <laughs> he asked me to guest review Haunted Mansion with Eddie Murphy last year, yeah. and I think I gave it a solid seven out of ten, or six or seven out. Of 10. It is. Better than it should be, and you think it would be. It's not good. Yeah, but you like you watch it, like well, that was terrible. A fun. Yeah, and it was like, and, and I think they have it this year, but they had the Halloween playlist on Disney Plus. Yeah, they have it again this and the Thanksgiving one. Oh, they have it. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Which is out. funny because <laughs> our American friends, <laughs> it's yeah. Thanksgiving for us now. <laughs> yeah, so you'll have that playlist in a month, but we get it. Yeah, yeah, but like so. But so I would I have like my setup with a separate monitor and stuff, and I would have my sec like Disney Plus on my second monitor last year, and I you know I take a break from work and I just play boop, boop, and I just watch like Frank and Weenie. Pull oh, and, Frank and Weenie is great. Yeah, I watched it, like three times last year. It was awesome, but yeah. I never the saw original, it. the first one or the. I wa- I like the the animated one, the newer. The, yeah, it's not. New well, there's anymore. more story to it, right? Yeah, but um, and I I think I saw the original one like year like in college, so I was like I can't remember this. Mm-hmm. And then after it's done, it's like, we recommend Frank and Weenie. I was like, yeah. And it was 25 minutes or whatever. So I watched that yeah. with Daniel Stern. And, yeah. and a that. young Sofia Coppola. Yes, yeah, yeah, this is true. Uh, so I watched that. Um, but yeah, that playlist is awesome. So I'm sure yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah, so smart. Choice. I don't know why Netflix hasn't stolen that. They, they did. <laughs> Netflix, when Netflix was new. Oh, did they? At Halloween, they had a Halloween play. This is like mm. 10 years ago, I want to say. 2000, yeah. probably 11, 12. They had a Halloween playlist. And then I was waiting for a Christmas playlist, and there was no Christmas, no holiday, nothing playlist. And then they've never done, they've never aggregated it like that again. They might have mm-hmm. too many titles. I don't know. I mean, you feel like whatever. But uh, yeah, no, it's what Disney Plus does is, is brilliant because it's all laid out there, and they do it in a way mm-hmm. where they're like specials, movies, TV, like, you know, TV sitcom, like things like that. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, when you guys sit down to watch that, that's going to be uh just hit play yeah. and um, I am still watching. <laughs> All the episodes are Thanksgiving episodes or Halloween episodes. Like, yeah, it's so genius. I love Disney Plus. I was watching it this morning. I was like, this is great. <laughs> so I, I put on gummy bears a few weeks ago and I got nice. yelled at. Aaron's not a fan. They're bouncing here and there and everywhere, everywhere. though. <laughs> it's such a I just can't get over like that's on there and Darkwing Duck. Oh, yeah. Obviously, as you know, I watch that <laughs> and Ducktales and stuff. But and then you scroll by and it's like it's always sunny in Philadelphia and American Horror Story. Yeah, because because we get like those random ones, and I guess you're like me where we don't have the age thing on it because mm-hmm. there's yeah. no need. So it's just like, all right, well, I just finished that episode of Darkwing Duck and now Predator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's how my day goes. Basically, it's like, well, Darkwing yeah. Duck followed by Predator followed by Chippendale. <laughs> Followed by uh, Alien Resurrection. <laughs> we watched all the, Aaron and I watched all the Alien movies over the summer on, uh, nice. or over the spring. I don't know what it was. It was this year is just like a, yeah. But we watched them all like freaking <laughs> from, <laughs> we started with number two with Aliens. Nice. Then we watched three, four, Predator. Or versus Predator versus Predator Two, then mm-hmm. we went back and watched Alien One, and then uh, the Prometheus and Alien Covenants happened. So it was <laughs> we did the machete order. We did. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Anyway, Star Wars. Yeah. Hol- uh, you know, I, I don't think they'll be doing another Christmas special for Lego because they did one, but uh, it's fun that they're not taking the brand too seriously over there, and yeah, yeah. it's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Never tell me the odds. Sir, the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. Never tell me the odds. Brought to you finally two <laughs> months later by our friends at Patreon. Patreon.com rub slash rebel scum podcast. 
If you like what we do, why don't you come on down and support us? And we greatly appreciate it, just like we appreciate the following people. Heidi Fetter, executive producer, Barry Brophy, Dennis Allen, Randy Kenobi, Mary Kristen Aton, Jeff Wilson, Phil Stanifor, Sooner Thrawn, Scott D., Josh Price, Matt W. Rez, Frank Perkins, Neil Lowry, D. Raven Spencer, Cosmic Girl 02, Gleek Play 1, Disney Desi, Charlotte, Kayla Davis, Aaron Quinton, Girls with Sabres, and the Den of Nerds. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Especially over the last month where we have been Mia. Mm-hmm. MIA. It's MIA. Um, life got personal. Yeah. In a positive way. Mm-hmm. Um, Alright, our first odd. Never tell me the odds. Well, Boba Fett with well, a book of Boba Fett. Let's just go with the actual title of the show. Will the book of Boba Fett. Be at least 50% flashbacks. Will it be told mostly See, through fast flashbacks? I'm compelled to go full Brock on this because it already says it already says 50% in there. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go 95 though. I'm like, yeah, I feel like the first season of the very least, like that's what you want. Like you could tell a good story of Boba Fett in the current, but like we all want to know how did he get out of the Sarlacc pit? Why is he like this? Why is he like that? What was it like growing up? Like could we see a young live action Boba Fett? That would be great. Daniel Logan. I'm going to go 33%. I think there will be flashbacks, but I don't think it'll be that much. Mm. Now that I said that, it'll, the entire thing will just be him on the throne. Big like, Fennec, yeah. remember when I did this. <laughs> it's a clip show. <laughs> it's all a clip show. And it's like all yeah. just clips from the original trilogy <laughs> and the droids cartoon. And that's it. It's just, yeah. we're just rewatching. <laughs> Him in the Sarlacc pit, chasing Solo in space, and in the droids cartoon. That works for me. Uh, Second odd, never tell me the odds, will we see trailers for all of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and the Andor show on November 12th? Will trailers for all three of them drop on November 12th? That does not count a one giant version, like where they do like a sizzle reel of all three of the shows. This is individual Mm. trailers. Wow. November 12 is what, like D23 that's the, or something? That's the Disney or, Plus day. They're calling it Disney Plus day. That's when Shang-Chi drops. That's um, They're doing like a big oh, event. Yeah, it's like their right, DC yeah. fandom that day. It's like they're doing yeah, everything yeah, right. they can. Yeah, so November 12th um, is the big day, which, which will yeah, mark gonna, two years of Disney Plus. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, I'm going to go 95% then. I think so. Like, why are they holding off on, like, the, the show is going to come out at some point soon, like. You might as well. Yeah, and they've already shown us like a little bit of Andor anyway, and they know mm-hmm. <clears throat> Boba Fett. They're gonna have to show us something because it's coming really. Soon. I mean, they don't have to. We're gonna watch anyway, but it's coming very soon. Yeah. And uh, Obi Wan, people are dying to see that one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, 80, 89.992735 percent. Nice. Very specific decimal pointage on that one. Uh, and our final odds today, the odds that we will see Ray, Finn, or Poe in live action in the next five years. And the reason why I chose this odd, Brock, is because watching that holiday special last year and watching this Halloween special this year, um, they've kind of taken these sequel trilogy characters in Lego and they've, I mean, they've been ridiculous stories. I'm not going to argue that, but they've kind of put them forward in the forefront and pushed them along story-wise. And I'm like, I kind of... I'm kind of, uh, you know, I, I like these characters. I would watch them again. So mm. never tell me you guys that we'll get one of those three in the next five years in live action. Ray, Finn, or Poe? That's what you said? Yeah. Mm, maybe Daisy Ridley. And maybe, and maybe John Boyega. I read something recently where uh, Isaac, Oscar Isaac was like, I can't do these movies anymore where I'm in like a green screen prison. <laughs> Not that like, I mean, it's gotten better from like the Phantom Menace by Red Lee's like, he wants to do just like dramatic, like traditional films. Cause he just did, he's working on Moon Knight right now and he just did Dune. So it's like, all of that is like, you know, after a point, you, it's not fun anymore. It doesn't, it just feels like a job rather than a, an, uh, an art form, I guess. So I'm going to go, 60 percent because it's just like they're like well, the skywalker saga is done until the money until the dollar he did say that in that interview though i think he says say well you know the money comes in so yeah yeah exactly but i mean so, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go like 20. Well, Daisy Ridley. Uh, Boyega might. There's a rumor spinning. Five years. I'm going to go full Brock. I'm going to change to full Brock. I'd like to see it because, I, like I yeah. said, like watching these, like even the, 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 the Christmas one last year, I was watching the, you watch it. I was like, mm-hmm. I would watch these characters again. And again, and look, yeah. this is knowing that the Lego stuff is goofy. I was just like, yeah, yeah. You know, I kind of, I kind of be on board with more of these. Yeah. More of these cast of clowns. It's, but it's funny, like, cause like, what if like about, I don't know, half of the characters are actually voiced by the actual actors. Like to the point that like, like yeah. Chadwick Boseman, like, yeah, he's, he, there is a, star lord episode but he keeps popping up in different like he he did a lot of voice acting for that so um but at the same note it's like when you don't have that actor you're like why didn't you get this person and then there's interviews where like they didn't ask me they didn't ask me and like yep. it's like so what's happening so there's there's more to it and then you gotta get bogged down with the like oh the the business side of it it's like well, that, I think that's maybe what, it's best if we don't have them come back in animation form or whatever. I don't know. I think I think when they don't come back for animation, it's usually. Oh no! Bit, it's absolutely it, that, it's and then the it money. takes you out of it. Like we, we, you and I both know that's one hundred percent the reason. But then, like, I feel like we might be taken out of it because of that. Because like, I, it's the inconsistencies, right? It's like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ooh, we got this guy to come back, but also this voice is now. You know, yeah. it's like Kermit the Frog's voice changes every two decades. It's like the yeah, first exactly. time, okay, I kind of I get it. That's obviously. a good point. But it's like you just keep, ch- you know, and, and yeah. like I I do I will say the Kermit's Kermit. You know, you understand the Jim Henson thing, obviously. Yeah. But Fozzie, like I remember yeah, the first thing Frank Oz didn't do, and Fozzie's my favorite Muppet. And the yeah. first thing Frank Oz didn't do, it, I was just kind of like. Is that not Frank? Like, it was like the whole time. That's all yeah. I could focus on was like, because I didn't know he, Frank Oz wasn't back. Yeah. Because I just took him for granted as Fo- like as Fozzie yeah. and Miss Piggy. Yeah. You know? and, and the new Miss Piggy is not bad. There's moments. But Fozzie, there's just like, I don't know. There's something all right. And and the whole, yeah. I can't remember what it was. If it was a TV Christmas special or like the movie with uh, uh, Jason Siegel. One of those was the first time. It wasn't Frank. God. I think it was a TV show, but it was like one of those. And I was just like, I can't like, what is happening right now? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it's like, but is it Frank? God? Like, is he just like, his voice is just different. Like what's happening? Like, mm-hmm. Cause it's close, but it's not perfect. And I think that that circle is back to star Wars again. I think with all the yeah. Reich playing on solo, you avoided somebody doing an impression of Harrison Ford. And you're just like, well, yeah. ah, you know, every once in a while, like, ah, oh, it took me out when he didn't sound like him. So, well, I mean, look, if you don't like, Oh, and Eric is Han Solo. They're like, well, that's fine too. Fine, just fine. <laughs> All right. You ready for your news? I'm ready for it's, it. It's been a while, so let me clear my throat. <clears> throat> let me clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Hollow news. Da 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 da. Hollow news. Da 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 da. Hollow da 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 da. Two seven. Two two seven. 227, JK edition. <laughs> All right, my mic's off. Hollow news, news you need to know right now. Uh, some fun news from The Mandalorian said, according to a video uploaded by Star Wars Meg, Kevin McKidd ha- was seen hanging around the California sound stages of smash hit Disney Plus series calls home, uh, The Mandalorian. The, tra- the train spotting and Grey's Anatomy star voiced Fen Rao in the animated series, aka the Clone Wars, but only appeared in seven episodes. Of course, this the precedent has long since been set via the de- debuts of Katie Sackhouse Bo Katan and Rosario Dawson's Ahsoka Tano. So there's no reason why more Filoni verse al- alumni would end up crossing over into the Mandalorian as the expanded universe continues to tie itself closer together. So very, very cool. Obviously, we love this. And even if he doesn't play Fen Rao, he's just there. It's just like it's a nice little Easter egg. As we said before, StarWars.com has announced that there are several books coming out. One being Star uh, Star Wars Shadow of the Empire by Adam Christopher. But also um, Star Wars Brotherhood by Me- Mike Chen, which follows Obi-Wan, Kenobi, and Anakin Skywalker amidst the chaos of the Clone Wars. And Skywalker's Rise to Jedi Knight. Star Wars Story of Jedi and Sith, a new middle grade anthology features adventures from 10 acclaimed authors and the young adult no- novel Star Wars Padawan by Kirsten White. 
depicting Obi-Wan in his early days as a student of Qui-Gon Jinn. And uh, I won't read the excerpt, but we talked about it earlier. I'm very excited. He's up for The Secret of the Sith. Is that what it is? Secret of the Sith? Shadow of the Sith. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> and in our final news, <laughs> people, Disney fans, you've done it again. The maiden voyage for the Halcyon, a.k.a. the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, the all-new Star Wars cruise-like hotel experience at Walt Disney Resort, has completely sold out. Despite the high price tag, I believe it's about four to five thousand dollars for a two day stay, American. Uh, this all inclusive Star Wars experience has led to plenty of bookings from fans who can't wait to board the Halcyon Galactic Star Cruiser in a first of its kind immersive vacation for the Star Wars super fans and those who love them. So it's no wonder that the guests have been calling Walt Disney World to book their trips for March 2022 and beyond. I believe. It is booked well into 2022, so if you are looking to set to a galaxy far, far away, you might have to wait a little bit longer, but hey, the park's still there. Go check out, um, uh, God, what's it called? Galaxy's Edge <laughs> and, and and ponder, like, oh, maybe one day I can stay at the hotel. Otherwise, this has been your Hollow News. Brock. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't want to do this over over Skype or whatever the hell this is. Google yeah. Hangouts or Teams or whatever. Yeah. But I got us tickets to the hotel. Oh! Not we that hotel. Wives? Not that. No. <laughs> God, no, I can't afford that. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> so you got to fit in my suit. I just got one. You got to fit in my suitcase. And, <laughs> and I'll wheel you throughout the lobby. And we're going <laughs> to Oh my god! Um, we're gonna sit in my van and we're gonna paste paste a poster with starscapes around. Yeah, it's like this is it. Do hey, you know what? Uh, Aaron got a telescope for her birthday back in July, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she was one night she was putting it up and looking, and we saw the moon, and and because I live in the woods, you can see the sky very clear, and yeah. there was a really really bright star next to the moon, like super bright, and I was like, yeah. what the hell is that? And I'm looking, I go, you know, I, I, I'll bet you that's Jupiter. Like, I just kind of, I was mm-hmm. like, it's got to be Jupiter. Like, it, it's not a star. It's too bright for a star. So we spun it on. She found, she's pretty good at finding it. She found it. And uh, it was Jupiter. It was really cool. And then we're like, oh, we got to find other planets. And I'm like, I don't know where the hell other planets are. I just took a guess. That was, <laughs> like, based on my grade two, you know, astronomy yeah. classes. I was, so then um, I got this thing called Skywalk. It's a Skywalk app. It's free on my phone. I went like this. Mm-hmm. And it's very, very um, convoluted. There's just so many crap out there. Like, I was like, I don't know what any yeah. of this means. I just want, just show me a planet. So eventually, like this, and it said Saturn. <laughs> and uh, and I looked, and I was like, I can't see it, but it says Saturn's right there. So I told her, and I showed her another thing. And she found Saturn, and we got to look at it with all the uh, the rings and stuff. And it was oh, yeah. pretty awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Saturn's probably the coolest planet because it has rings and like 200 moons. I don't know. Is that nine moons? Or don't say Pluto. Always... Is Pluto your favorite? Because it's not. Is it planet again? No, it's a <laughs> it's a large, it's a planetoid. I don't know. I, I've always I've always fancied planet. Uh, I always fancied to visit Uranus. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, top five. <laughs> top now. five planets Brock would like to visit. <laughs> Uranus, Uranus, Uranus. <laughs> uh, top five villains for Boba Fett to face off against. I should have read that full through when I picked my top five. But top five villains for the Boba Fett show, basically. Who will be the villains of the show? My number five. I'm putting this one out there for you, Brock. It's Bosk. Number five is Boss. Oh, you... You peaked too early on this because you know the rules of the top five. Hondo and Naka. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he falls under a villain, but yeah, he's cares. not on my list. Yeah. He should be in the show for sure, though. Yeah, they should all be on the show. Uh, my number four is uh, Palpatine slash Snokey Snoke. <laughs> nice. My number four is going to be Bosk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number three might come as a shock, but the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian. 
come up in Boba Fett because it's a villain. But what's a villain? A villain would be someone that Boba Fett would consider a villain in the Mm, show, mm. not necessarily a true villain. Like to Palpatine, you know, the the rebels are the villains. So uh, I'm going to go with the Mandalorian, Din Djarin. Uh, My number three is going to be someone from Crimson Dawn. I I wish I could give a more precise name, but like we don't really know much about Crimson. Like maybe. Oh, that was Black Sun. I was going to see Zor, but I'm like, that's Black Sun. Like, yeah, yeah so... Yeah. And Maul's dead at this point, so... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless yeah, they bring him back. Not. They can just be like, ah, Rebels was a, was mm-hmm. a dream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my number two is uh, Thrawn. No. Oh. I don't think so, because they're saving him for a soak and everything. But uh, you never know. Yeah. He could... I mean, this could lead into Thrawn. My number two is sort of made up. But I believe there is this character, Jabba's son, because I believe Jabba has a son, at least in Clone Wars. <laughs> yeah, he has. But a like, son. what? Why is Boba taking the throne? And and like, it's not like he, like, I'm sure the story is going to tell us why he wanted to do this. Like, it's not like he had bad blood with Jabba, to our knowledge. Like, it's not like Jabba did him any ill will. Mm-hmm. So why why go in there? But we'll, we'll see. But yeah, Jabba's son would be kind of cool. We have to have a hut. We have to. Yes. Like we're waiting too long on live action huts. Let's like, let's go. Uh, my number one, uh, Luke Skywalker, or Han Solo. Well, I'm gonna go Luke Skywalker because he's already made an yeah. appearance. It won't be, but uh, that's number one. By the way, I will not be disappointed if any of my top five do not come true. FYI. Uh, I don't know how exactly you would do this, but some kind of like something somehow Django Fett. <laughs> like, I don't know, or, or a clone, you know what I mean? Like, Rex. I feel like a big part of that story. Like, yeah, Rex, like that story, like there's going to be a clone or some kind of that would be cool. Or like maybe he's facing off against like a phantom like Django Fett because it's like I am a clone I was I'm not like it's like will the story talk about like I was made in a tube even though I'm special or you, you know what Omega <laughs> that would be perfect yeah Omega, Omega. Old Omega. <laughs> we did do a never tell me how with Omega appearing on the show yeah yeah so, yeah. So. yeah it's curious because you know the people working on this had something to do with that and the you know mm, cross-contamination yeah. is it's usually pretty good. I'm I'm all in on it. So those are our top five. Let us know what your top fives Boom. are in the comments down below. Also, let us know your never tell me the odds. It has been a while, but I think we're back. Are we back? It's been a while. When are we're we? We're back, baby. Are we going to record again? Yeah, next week. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, that's the point. <laughs> Once a week. All right. Uh, but we are back. This is fun, Brock. This was a blast. Uh, just so you know. My my camera is on my computer because I I used my tripod recently and it's in my truck. <laughs> nice. So I couldn't really set up the way I wanted, and I was already running late today, and I didn't want to leave you hanging any longer than I already did. Yeah, Fun fact: play. I'm in the original recording. Original. Space, so. Yeah. The very first time I showed up, I wore a Star Wars T-shirt, yeah. this hat, and uh, we sat down with like these little puny microphones, not the one, not the fancy yep. one you have now. And uh, there was no video back then, and you said, I'm rolling. And uh, we did rolling. top, you remember our top five that day? I think so. Top five Star Wars films. Wow. And we had the exact same top five. It wouldn't be today, I don't think, but back then it was. Uh, <laughs> five years ago, it was the same. Same as, Anyway, this is episode 227, Brock's Boom. favorite episode. We finally did it. Finally. Mary. (laughs) All right, here we go. We're going to wrap it up. He's Brock. I'm James, and he was always scum. Rebel scum. All right. Where's my mouse? Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.